All right, I'm gonna to talk to you today about how to use the route function on a chart plotter. I'm gonna show you some examples from our Raymarine Axiom Pro chart plotter. Um, similar features in other Raymarine products and actually with other manufacturers too. This is an alternative to just doing individual navigations to individual waypoints. They're sort of traditional go-to navigation functionality to one point. The route is a combination of waypoints. It's really helpful when you've got tricky areas to go through, a lot of twists and turns, and you want to not have to be keeping looking down and finding your next waypoint and, and clicking on it and uh, making sure that it's in a safe spot. So we'll walk you through that today, and hopefully it's helpful to you for navigating on your boat using your advanced features of your chart plotter. Okay, we're going to go right into building the route. In this example, I am using a Raymarine Axiom Pro chart plotter. Other Raymarine plotters or other software versions may look slightly different, but the general approach to building a route is similar. You want to first zoom in close enough to see the appropriate level of detail. Then tap and hold on where you want the first waypoint. Then tap on the build route option. This will place your first waypoint of the route. Now to place additional waypoints, simply move the chart so that the green crosshairs symbol is where you want the next waypoint. When you like the position it is in, tap on the crosshairs. You've now created your second waypoint, and you can now see the route being drawn on the chart. Alternatively, if you can see on the chart where you want your next waypoint, you don't need to scroll the chart. Instead, just tap on the chart where you want that next waypoint. As you build more waypoints around obstacles, Eventually, you'll need to scroll the chart so that the green crosshairs is in the next desired position. You may find that at times you'll need to zoom out to see enough of the chart to decide where to place your next waypoint. Then, you can zoom in to make sure you place it exactly where you want it to be. You'll notice that I'm placing the waypoints in the middle of channels, roughly equidistant between land. Where I want the route to turn around an obstacle, I place the waypoint a safe distance off of that obstacle, like you would normally do if you were steering around that point of land. You'll want to place a waypoint wherever it is either necessary to turn or where you want to ensure you stay in the middle of a channel. I like to put the waypoint in the center of the channel, assuming that you will have the whole space to navigate. But of course, if there is approaching traffic, you'll need to navigate to the side to allow for safe passage but at least the route in the middle of the channel gives you a good reference point. Now, this route that I built into the city of Stockholm was 30 miles long and required 66 waypoints. It was one of the most complicated routes we built all summer. While it took me a while to build this route, it was still extremely valuable and saved us tons of time having to look down at the chart and try to interpret buoys and land and decide where to head to next. This, in my opinion, is the single biggest benefit of building a route. It forces you to think through the navigation for the day, to develop a plan for any tricky spots, and to consider alternatives, all while you are in the safety of an anchorage or the dock before you depart. As you build the route, you may make a mistake and place a waypoint where it doesn't belong. This is okay. Simply tap on the undo button at the top of the screen, multiple times if necessary, and then continue adding more waypoints. Okay, so that was a marathon, but once we come to near the end of our destination, which is this harbor here, we don't waypoint all the way into it. We usually stop a little bit before because you're distracted by accepting the navigation request to go to the next waypoint, the prompts and all that as you're getting into the harbor and trying to, you know, prepare to dock or douse sails or whatever and plus all the lines on the chart can be distracting when you're so close to your destination. So we're a little bit outside of our um, destination there, uh, Naka Strand, and so I'm gonna click Finish Route Build. You're given the option here to follow right away. Um, so I will do that, and but you can also look at the route plan. If you happen to build your route in reverse, you can go to Route Plan and, and switch the order um, Sometimes we do that, we'll, we'll look at our destination and we'll work waypoints backwards to where we currently are. So that's kind of helpful to go in a route plan and flip the route. But if I go to follow here, you'll see when I go back to where we are right now, it's given me my first route and you know it takes us to our first waypoint. 
um, and then onward. And so some of the stats, and you can change this, these as you wish, but it's telling me my first ETA, the total time. Um, now, we're not moving at all because we're at anchor, so that's why it says three hours to get to that first waypoint. Distance to waypoint, 0.4 miles, and then the, the total route ETA. So this is helpful reference as you're going through the day. The other thing that we do before we get underway is to review the route and make any final adjustments to the waypoint locations. When you first make a route, you'll find that you are zooming out a lot to find out where you are and where you need to go from a big picture perspective. It is easy when you're zoomed out to place a waypoint too close to an obstacle and not realize it. So we zoom in and do a final walkthrough of the whole route to check for any of these issues. If you do need to adjust a waypoint, it is really easy. Simply tap and hold on the waypoint, select more options, then move. Now you can reposition the waypoint and tap on save when you are done. And then once you're done with the route, you can go see the route here under waypoints, routes and tracks and click on routes. And uh, we've got a lot of um, previous routes built in here, but if I go down, the, the latest ones are at the bottom of the list. Well, actually, they're sorted alphabetically, but Route 49 is the one we're currently following. You can see a little boat icon there, and you can see it's 30 nautical miles, and this little eyeball thing means it's being shown on the chart. The other ones here are being hidden. Now, um, they're being hidden as far as the line between the waypoints, but the waypoints still exist on the chart, um, unless you were to go and remove the waypoints completely. But it's kind of a nice thing here where you can show and hide the route, so... Um, like if I were to show, um, if I were to show Route 48, what we did yesterday, and then I go to the chart, you'll see the line drawn between the waypoints that makes the route that we came into this anchorage yesterday. Um, but periodically, we go in here, waypoint routes and tracks to routes, and click on Show Hide and uncheck those previous routes so it doesn't clutter up the chart for viewing. So I'm showing that um, route. Yeah, so here, when you're on the main route route list, Route 49, I can press on that and go to View Route Plan. And it shows all the waypoints, the um, distances between them, the ETAs that it's anticipating us getting there. And you can go over here and uh, if I wasn't actually actively following a route currently, this reverse button wouldn't be grayed out. I could actually reverse the route and it would flip the order. And then you can add waypoints and do other things. But that's the gist of it. Um, we are all set. You can see the route drawn there, the old route from yesterday gone. And so we will get underway here. Tom. And I'm Karen. Welcome to Life 4.0, where we share our adventures of life on board our sailboat as we explore this amazing planet one anchorage at a time. We spend at least half of the year sailing and the remainder enjoying the beautiful New England region of the United States. We've been sailing for several decades and have benefited immensely from the wisdom of others over the years. Because of this, we now dedicate some of our content to sharing our knowledge in the form of instructional and how-to videos like this one. Okay, we're now underway on our route. So this dotted line there, there's a lot of stuff going on here, but this dotted line tells you for you to get to the next waypoint, that's the rum line you need to steer for. And the data here shows 9, 9.29 a.m. That's the ETA to that waypoint, um, and it's two minutes away. Distance to the waypoint is 450 meters. And based on our speed right now, speed over ground of 5.8 knots, if you look at the total distance, it's, it's calculating final arrival at 2.45 p.m., which this is really helpful too. And you can change these data boxes as you want. But that's it. We'll kind of slowly do a curve around here. And I will show you what it does when you get close to your waypoint that you're navigating to. It comes up with a prompt and uh, let you know that you're within the vicinity of that waypoint. This is a setting that you can change. You can say how many meters away do you want it to prompt you that you've arrived at your waypoint. 
you can set it close, you can set it far away, depending upon your personal preference. So we get close, about 140 meters away. Just off this point of land right here. Okay, there it goes, it says waypoint arrival, how far away it is, you can click OK. And then now you can see, it's very hard to detect here, but another dotted line going to the next waypoint. So it's almost in line with a heavy gray, gray line, <clears throat> which is the immediate direct course between waypoints. So um, now we're gonna turn and follow on that course. And it's given us the ETA to this next waypoint at 9.32 p.m., two minutes away, how many meters, or if it's further away, how many nautical miles, and then our, again, our overall arrival time at the end of the route. So that's how that works. Very helpful when you're going through tricky areas like this. So when I'm in the route list and I look at the route that I'm on, or really any route, but let me go down to the route we're, we're on, Route 49, I can go view the route plan and here I can name it if I want. So rename route, tap on the route name there and I can change it to you know, Stockholm. Click save, and there we go. We got our, our new route name, and obviously in these waypoints, I could change names from them as well. Um, under route options, you can change the color, uh, the time, um, ETA versus time to go, speed is actual uh, versus, I think, through, oh, planned. Okay, so you can set a planned speed, or you can take the actual speed. Um, and then you can export the route if you want to move it to somewhere, to a different device. So a lot of good options there. We will close out of here. So if you find, uh, for whatever reason, you need to stop your navigation on the route, it's very similar to stopping navigation to a single go-to point. Go up to the menu, go to navigation, and just tap on stop. So now we're just navigating like normal. The route is still on the chart, but we're not using it, we're not following it, and we got our vectors, our course over ground, and our heading vector still showing on there, and all the data statistics have gone away. Now, there may be other times where you, you need to stop the route to stop for lunch, or maybe continue on the next day. If you're starting the day and you, you've built a route, uh, you wanna follow the route, go down here on the menu to waypoints, routes, and tracks, to the routes list, you find your route. So I have named this Stockholm. I can click on that and I just go to follow. And I'm gonna tell Karen not to follow the waypoint because it's way back at the beginning, and half an hour ago. Um, so that's showing, <laughs> taking us, navigating us to our first waypoint back here at the very beginning, like 20 minutes ago. So. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop that navigation. And now we're back to just normal everyday navigating on the chart plotter. Now if I want to restart uh, following a route, so I've got this route, my next waypoint's up here. We've already passed this waypoint. Uh, next waypoint's here. Um, I can follow from that point. So I'm going to tap and hold on that waypoint to get the list of the waypoint information. Um, I can go just go to that waypoint directly by a single navigation, um, or I can go to more options, and it says uh, follow route, okay? And then it's gonna ask me from the start of the route or from this waypoint that I just clicked on. I wanna go from this waypoint. And now we're back to how we were a little while ago. So some people might say, well, you know, making these routes and all these turns and all that, it's really kind of more for a power boater uh, that has an engine that can just, you know, drive right to the next uh, waypoint destination. And that is true that it's helpful for power boaters, but it is helpful for sailors as well, like us. Um, we're in a, kind of a narrow area here, and we've got wind kind of on our nose, but it doesn't preclude you from having a destination upwind of you that you still may tack to get up there, but you still know that's where I ultimately need to be. Um, and you can use it uh, when you're underway sailing. We've done it many times, and it's very helpful. Again, 
you know, like if we were to get to this waypoint and have some good good wind to sail with, um, but we need to tack, we just have to obviously watch out for islands nearby like we would normally do when we're navigating a boat. Um, and then we get in more clear water, we have more room to tack, and then we know, okay, this is our intermediate destination, and after that we're going to turn. So it's just not for power boaters that can put the throttle down and go fast to the next waypoint. It's also very helpful for sailors that uh, may end up needing to, to tack to get to that point. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, you can change the setting on how close you need to get to your next waypoint before it does a waypoint arrival message. Uh, we brought it in quite a bit. I think it defaulted to like 100 meters or 150 meters. But in order to change that, you go to the home screen. There we go, and down here to alarms. And on alarms, you go to settings. If you scroll down here, you'll see something called waypoint arrival. And this is to turn the message on or off. Um, we like to have it on. And then arrival radius. So we've set it to 40 meters. So if you wanted something higher or something lower, um, you change it to that. If you're navigating in very close quarters to places that are dangerous, you, you want this to be close um, so that it'll wait until you get right up to your waypoint before it prompts you to move on to the next waypoint. Um, otherwise you get new um, rum lines that are pointing to places further down where you still need to be navigating to the original waypoint. So very important to have that be a low number. Um, so that's the uh, arrival radius. Okay, we come up to our next waypoint here on the route. It's three minutes away, uh, 312 meters away as well. Now I've set my um, waypoint arrival radius to 40 meters. Um, but you don't have to come within 40 meters of a waypoint. If it detects that you've passed the active waypoint and it seems like you're heading on to the next waypoint, it'll come up with the uh, waypoint arrival message and allow you to advance the route. Um, so I'll show you how that works. So we will come close to this waypoint, but not within 40 meters. Right now we're 250. Okay, you see we're about a beam to the waypoint. It's 127 meters. Actually, we just passed it. Now the distance is getting greater um, from the waypoint. So shortly here, we should get a message to prompt us to advance to the next waypoint. And there we go. Waypoint arrival, 133 meters. Um, I can click OK there and now it's advancing us. So it's determined that I've gone beyond and it's kind of a handy feature um, so you can have kind of the best of both worlds there. Have a, a narrow close-in waypoint arrival radius but if you choose to miss it then it'll prompt you to move on. All right that wraps up that video on using routes on your chart plotter. Hopefully you got some value out of that. We always look forward to your comments and suggestions. We read every comment that's written on our videos. And hopefully you'll have a little bit more safety on the water, being able to follow a route from point to point and be able to focus more on the other fun parts of sailing. Be sure to give our video a like and uh, check out our other videos, uh, how-to videos, and also our adventure videos on our travels throughout Europe. Take care.